Well, here we go for this second game in this second semi-final. John White taking the first game 15-9. Using his reach and his power to outplay Lee Beachel. And not really a bad uh, bad game from Lee uh, J. I think Lee just hasn't really figured out, you know, he hasn't solved the puzzle yet of how to get John, you know, take control of the points away from him. Even when John got into a little bit of trouble, he was getting back into the points with some, with some very s patient shots down the wall. Because if you stand so close to him, which causes you a problem getting around, then you've created the interference, and the side is very good. <laughs> well, that sounds a bit like a bit of a lecture. <laughs> Lee Beachel listening intently to the explanation. <laughs> well, I, need, I think the players seem fairly annoyed when the referees start making some comments. Yeah. I know last night at one point, uh, Lee actually asked the referee to stop talking to him about what his <laughs> explanation was. It's hard enough dealing with his opponent. Yeah. I have to wonder a little bit too with the, the match that was so easy for Lee last night. If, if it might have done him a little bit, you know, uh, better preparation for a match like this if he had actually had a little bit more of a test. A little more time on the court. And these well guys are all familiar with the court. But it's never easy to prepare for playing John White. Right. I was noticing the way that Lee's been playing throughout the week and uh, he really has been playing immaculate squash. Yeah, he played he's error free last night. He's Beautiful. Be I think he's, he's had three matches, one in three nil. And uh, that's, that's a great asset to come through an event to keep still be fresh through to the semi-final. Right. But I've noticed the way that Lee's been playing over the last six months or a year that he, he really is, he's got he's tremendous width, trem tremendous length, his, his shot selection is immaculate as well. And he's, he's, he's probably playing the most classic, the, the best classic squash out of all the squash players right now. Yeah, he's, he's got a, it seems like a lot more patience than a lot of the other players. He's willing to play long points, just kind of try to open up the court and put the ball away once the court's opened up instead of throwing shots out. Beautiful get there. <laughs> Beautiful shot from John White. It looked like it was going to be a clean winner to the back, and you know John had the presence to keep waiting, and saw that Lee get the ball and just put it down short. Well, Lee seems to play the the, the classic type of squash where he, his small advantages accumulated over a period of time, over a period of shots, over some shots, and then eventually the rally breaks down. And you right. outmaneuver your opponent. And while John White does play like that, he's got the capability to do that. He also has the capability of playing shots <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> and really just taking his opponent out of the game with one shot. Ball's got a totally different sound coming off the wall sometimes from John's racket. Wow, this is an incredible squash from John White. So much pressure. He's John just kind of walking around the court. He's just not having a beautiful Great get there. retrieve. <laughs> incredible athleticism. Well, the ball coming into the middle of the court, at the back of the court. Uh, John White stopping for safety's sake. Nope. Yeah, Lee might not have enjoyed being hit with that one. <laughs> yeah, John has just got so much power on both sides. Really hits a nice ball. It's very difficult to contain that type of power that John White has. Sometimes you've just got to, you got to go with it. No. You've got to understand that. You can't really nullify his power. Right. You can't hit every ball slow, tight to the wall, up and down the wall. You really have to just go with it. Sometimes you've actually got just to attack John first to take his attack away from him. Right. Make put him in the defense. He'll keep him the time set up for the for his shot. Yeah. yeah. He does such a great job at generating his own pace or feeding off of somebody. You know, it's it's just, uh, you know, like I say, it doesn't seem like Lee has, has yet to figure out how to get John sort of out of the middle of the court. Well, you'll notice with Lee, just before he, he strikes the ball, he's... <laughs> wow. <well, laughs> that's a great corkscrew lob from John White. Not traditionally a squash shot. Yeah. Save for the hardball Take game. it back to the hardball, that's right. 
Well, that's a great rally. Both players all over the court. Well, as I was saying, that when you watch Lee Beachel's technique, before he plays every shot, he puts a slight delay on it. And you really can't tell where the ball is going to go, especially on that backhand side. Yeah, he holds it really well and just sort of punches it down the wall. It really is his greatest strength. And after about an hour of play to, to throw your body forward to look for that drop shot and then, and then find that the ball's at the back of the court, it's takes a lot out of your legs. Yeah. It's a lot of work going back and forth and, and then just having it, it really freezes his opponent a little bit. Some nice length there. Strange miss from Lee Beachel. We didn't seem to be under too much pressure, but yet um, pushed the ball into the tin. Might have relaxed just a little too much on that one. Yeah, he had a good opening right there and dumped it right in the middle. Well, the ball coming into the middle of the court again. Referee playing a let. 7-9, play it again, guys. This is a pretty big point for Beachel. If he can get the point back here and be serving at 10-7, he's got a nice advantage late in the game. After building kind of a you know a cushion, and yeah, John is just he's just not going away. Well, that's right. That's why the last point surprised me a little bit. Lee Beachel just pushing the ball into the tin. Yeah. You, I thought you would really make that point tough for John. Try and create that cushion. A bit of a loose ball there by Lee. Well, we're going to get a technical explanation here. Well, I can knock it over his hand when I'm going for my shot. It's not the same. The same with the ball. Well, I'm not too sure what the what the ruling is on this, but uh, John White, when as he was going through to the ball, he knocked the rack out of Lee Beachel's arm. Referee telling Lee that uh, you know you really should have kept more, a stronger grip on his racket. Yeah, I think uh, Lee was trying to argue that John knocked the racket out of his hand while Lee was finishing his shot. The referee's opinion is that. It was John's shot, so it really doesn't matter. Well, as the pace of this rally is, has increased somewhat. Another uncharacteristic error by Lee right there. Well, this is very strange, Lee, Lee Beachel, just losing concentration here. Yeah, he created a great lead, 9-6 up in the second game. Back to 9 all. We've also seen, seen the last cut. Oh, and John White exactly Another the same. Characteristic. Huh. John very frustrated by that one. Well, I think both players seem to have lost the rhythm a little, a little bit. The last five or six, seven rallies have been a lot of lets, yeah. a lot of stoppages, breaking up rhythm. We also see that the rallies that they do have seem to be a little bit faster than before. Then taking the ball early. <laughs> I don't think it'll be very serious. I think he just uh, lost his footing and, and uh, yeah. Just
it's unusual to see so many balls being hit that far down on the 10. You know, they're usually right there on the top. This is a big, another big moment for Lee, though, because he's gained another slight advantage. John's just... Oh, that's a great boost from John White. This is great width again. Great decision from the referee. Yep. Don't seem to be any lingering effects. A little problem John had with his left leg there. No, not at all. I think it was just just a problem of footing. That was it. No. And the power that John White creates, the back backhand is incredible. It really puts a lot of pressure because you know, it hits the ball so hard, it's so low, but it travels all the way to the back of the court. Well, these guys choosing rather than playing a, a loose ball and and with it. You know, perhaps you're going to miss hit it if you try and take it too early. Right. Um, the guys are like to stop, play the rally again. There's been a lot more of that through this game than there was in the first game. First game, the players are pretty content to play. So, 10-11, 10-11, John White serving. Well, this really a scrappy squash, Jay. Yeah, it's become a little, a little dodgy. <laughs> I, w I would expect that this ki this kind of rhythm would favor John White, more yeah. of a shot maker. Right. They're both making errors. It's you know, both of them seem to have lost their way a little bit in this stretch of the match. It was pretty big part of the part of the second game. So John White, from being down twice in this game, goes into the lead, 12-11, and at one nil one nil up. This looks quite a dangerous position for Lee Beecham. Yeah, very frustrating to Beachel if he can't pull this game out. After working as hard as he did to build a couple of leads, have John just take the lead back towards the end of the game. Be and the, the pace leave, of this rally a little is bit increasing to think as well. These guys heading the ball crisply to the back of the court, taking the taking the ball in early to the front. Loose shot oh. from Lee Beachel, but Look. John White again just sticking it into the tin. It's just a comedy of errors right yeah. now. Just making some mistakes on seemingly very simple balls. Well, I think uh, whoever lost their concentration first, I think it was contagious. <laughs> well, the crowd not really having an opportunity to get really emotionally involved in this game yet. A lot of stoppages, a lot of lets. Yeah, just not a lot of exciting... You know, the play crowd tends to get into it when there's a lot of really exciting guests, but as soon as the players start making errors like this, 15, it's kind of difficult to get into it. The two players seem like they're you know, not as into it as they were early in the match. I think they both kind of just want to survive this game. Yeah. <laughs> get on with a third. Yeah, I think we'll all be happy when this game is over. <laughs> Well, pace of this rally increasing again, incredibly fast. Nice. And again, lead ball. And another stoppage. John White putting so much pressure on the ball. Well, it doesn't seem to have been much a, a physical battle so far, Jay, but uh, we see that we're not even finished the second game yet, and the, the match has been going 45 minutes. But uh, a lot of that time, I suppose, has been in, in stoppages and late balls. There's been a lot of stopping and starting. You haven't seen many of long points. This is one of the longer points in the match so far, certainly of this game. 
neither one of them seems to have gained any sort of control on this particular point. It just Baltimore just trying to kind of get their rhythm back. Well, normally you find after this length of time hitting the ball, the ball slows down. But it seems as though this ball is actually moving just as fast as it, is, as it was at the start of the match. So it probably makes it just, just that little bit more difficult to control if it's moving that fast. Right. That's a great boss from John White. Using all the angles of the court. Yeah. Great rally from John White. Yep, very nice. John just patiently waiting for his opportunity. Finally got the ball he was looking for and put it away. Well, that shot taking John White to 14-12. Game ball to for a two-love lead. Yeah, we'll leave Lee with a little bit to think about for 90 seconds between games if he doesn't well, pull this one out. Doesn't want to start thinking yet. It's, no, it's not it's over yet. That's a great boss. boss. <laughs> well, not exactly percentage squash. That, no. that ball landed one inch above the tin. Yeah, it's a risky shot, but he took advantage of it. Well, do you think you'll go for another one here? I don't think so when he's got game ball against him. <laughs> Didn't stop him last time, though. John White seems to be picking up the pace of the, the points again. Oh, John White going for his favorite shots. Three in a row, three kills from out. the back of the court. Lee Beach will just manage him to get to them. Don't want to give John White too many opportunities. No. <laughs> He's got such a powerful arm, John White. He can actually hit these shots from behind them. They, you know, he can put a, put together a lot of winners in a short period of time, given the opportunity. See Lee patiently well, Lee, just Lee, trying to keep Lee this just point hanging going. in this rally, being very patient. Great drop shot, creates opportunity. To the back Beautiful of the court. Link there. Fantastic retrieval. This is great squash. Quick hands oh. by White again. Still hangs in there. Yes, Probably the best rally of the match so far, Jay. Yep. Such a crucial point. Well, Lee not happy with the referee there, but I think he's really kicking himself. He had a great opportunity. He had three, four opportunities in that yep. rally to finish it off, but didn't quite put the ball away. Just couldn't get that, that last shot tight enough. That's a great shot from John White. Lee Beach will just Lee managed just to pick it up. Early picking these balls up. 13, 14, right. Oh, this is exciting stuff. For a game that was actually quite boring for about five, ten minutes, a lot of lets, a lot of stoppages. The last suit. few rallies have been great. Yeah, the two players have eliminated the errors and starting to play some very long, patient Slap. points. Slap. Both of them with some opportunity, right. just not able to finish it off. Well, Lee Beachel wants to stay in that tee as much as possible. He doesn't. He's standing so far forward, but when John White hits a good length, oh. John White firing in that those kills, and he gets it. Cross court net. What a shot! Gives John White the second game, 15-13. He leads two games to love.